All right, for the first time, a vaccine has tested positive in preventing HIV infections. That's according to a U.S. funded study involving more than 16,000 volunteers in Thailand. The combination vaccine prevented infections in about 30% of the people on the trial, as compared with those on a placebo. The combination vaccine includes Alvac, made by Sanofi Aventis, and AIDSVAC, made by VaxGen. And neither vaccine has independently stopped the HIV virus in previous studies. AIDS experts say the results could transform future research and spur scientists to use the process that created this vaccine to create even better ones. Well, Matt, the National Institute of uh, Allergy and Infectious Disease funded the Breakthrough HIV Vaccine Study. Its director, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, is the top federal official responsible for AIDS research. He joins us right now. Uh, Dr. Fauci, great to have you with us. Give us some perspective. We've been working on, on research for AIDS for many, many years. I mean, how significant is this? Well, it's a very important finding in the sense that it's opened doors now that were really closed. And let me explain. We have been attempting to get an effective vaccine for literally over two decades, and everything that has been tried has been a complete failure, really no signal of any kind of even slight efficacy. The fact that we have in this large trial involving 16,000 people a 31.2 percent efficacy, uh, it's a modest efficacy. It's not something that's prime time, as it were, but it's going to allow us to pursue what the potential mechanism of that protection is is because now we have a foundation upon which to ask the questions that will hopefully allow us to get efficacy of vaccines much higher than 30-ish percent, up to 60, 70, or 80 percent where we want to be. So although this is a very important finding, it needs to be taken in context and in perspective that it's more of a roadway to a lot of work that needs to be done as opposed to an end in and of itself. So, I mean, the, the question then is, what's the next step here? I mean, do you work more with these vaccines? Do you need a new trial, uh, maybe a more controlled study? Do you uh, work on new vaccines that come from these vaccines? Where, where do you see the next steps, Dr. Fauci? Now, that's a, that's a very good question. The next step is to try and figure out what we call the correlate of immunity. Go back and look at the samples we've collected, draw bloods from the people who are in the trial, and try and figure out if there's a clue as to what particular laboratory parameter that you could follow that would be an indication that it correlated with this protection. And once you get that, then you start to design vaccines with some similarity and some differences that are aimed at inducing that particular parameter that you've linked to protection. Because up to now, we don't have any idea of what of a many, many immunological or laboratory phen uh, phenomena, namely the body's ability to respond to a virus. We don't know what particular component of that would be associated with protection against infection. We didn't even know if it existed until recently because we've never had a positive effect like this. So this is the foundation for that kind of study, correlating something we can induce with protection. All right, so Dr. Fauci, you've mentioned you've been working on this, or everyone's been working on this for a couple of decades. You mentioned this is the foundation. So how many more years are we talking potentially before there is um, the next significant step here? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I can't tell you that. It's certainly going to be measured in years. I mean, some people, when they hear an announcement like this, they think, well, next year we're going to wind up having a vaccine. That's not only extraordinarily unlikely, it's, 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 it's virtually impossible that that's going to happen. It's going to be measured in years. I can't tell you how many years, but if we had this conversation uh, six months ago and you asked me that, I would say I can't even tell you if we're even ever going to get a vaccine. Now at least I have some cautious optimism that we're on the right path, but I can't put a number for you about how many years. Are there other steps uh, that are more likely to prevent, prevent a, a stronger AIDS breakout? I mean, are some people, for example, genetically predisposed to resist the AIDS virus? Yeah, there are a group of people, but they are such a relatively small fraction of the population. There's a genetic uh, defect that doesn't make anybody sick, but it doesn't allow the virus to infect you. It's seen in 1% of the Caucasian population and in virtually 0% of African population. So it's not something that is broadly applicable to the population. The best thing to do is behavioral things, you know, avoid unsafe sex, use a condom when you have sex, do the kinds of things 
that we've been talking about with prevention for a very long time. Dr. Fauci, what does this do, though, for the drug companies around the world? We had Sanofi, Aventis, and I believe it was VaxGen, who had the two vaccinations that were brought together in this uh, recent development. Does it harness everyone involved because of this kind of big step forward? You know, I can't speak for, for pharmaceutical companies. I'm sorry. They're, they're going to make their decisions, their business decisions, based on what they do internally. Do I, think, I look at it most. Do you think they'll be more interested, though, with this development? Uh, well, they're, they're, that's a no brainer. Of course, they're going to be more interested in it if you have a successful product. All right. We're going to leave it there. Dr. Fauci, thanks so much. Dr. Right. Fauci, director of the National thanks. Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease.